Pepsi-Cola, P-E-P-S-I. That's your smartest cola buy. Pepsi-Cola presents Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Harding, Counter Spy. Calling Washington. United States counter spies, especially appointed to investigate and combat the enemies of our country, both at home and abroad. Tonight, the case of the genuine counterfeits. Another counter spy report to the American people. Brought to you each Tuesday and Thursday by Pepsi-Cola. Pepsi-Cola, it's a spot. Two full glasses, that's a lot. That's right, you heard what they said. Two full glasses of sparkling Pepsi from one big 12-ounce bottle. You're getting an extra glass full. And what a delicious glass full. The most refreshing, delightful cola that ever tickled your taste. You can't top Pepsi's tangy flavor. And that big, big bottle saves you money, goes twice as far. Pepsi is America's big, big favorite and America's biggest cola value. So why take less when Pepsi is best? Whenever you reach for refreshment, remember... Why take less when Pepsi's best? And now to Counter Spy. A little over six weeks ago, in a small mid-European country, a man the private secretary of a diplomat named Vornay lay on the kitchen floor of his own apartment. His head, twisted to one side, revealed a dark bruise on one temple. And as he lay unconscious, a steady stream of gas hissed from the open jets of the stove. Gas which filled the room and swirled around the flickering pilot light of the stove. are you doing here? Waiting to see you, Mr. Vaughan. Such a pleasant surprise. Oh, uh, come into the apartment. Thank you. I returned home from the funeral of poor Carlos. You heard of his horrible death in the gas explosion, did you not? Yes, Mr. Vaughan, I heard. So tragic. And right before I am to leave for America. Oh, come in, come in. But let us not speak of that. Uh, tell me, my friend, why are you here? This paper will explain. Uh -huh. You see, I am to replace Carlos as your secretary. You? Giving up your position in the government? But why, my friend? Because I am your friend. And I realize your danger. Danger? To me? Mr. Borney, I don't believe the death of your secretary was the accident it seemed to be. Rudolf. You think the gas explosion was... It may have been an attempt to get at you. But why? I'm a poor old man, unimportant. Would your country send you on an important mission like this if they thought that? But that is why they sent me. Since our ambassador in the United States is ill, I sailed to America. Arrange for the engraving of bonds for our government and bring them back personally. All merely an honor to an old man. Three million dollars merely in honor? The engraving of the bonds on which the future of our nation depends? Well, perhaps the fact that I avoid publicity and am not known outside our country was an added reason. Oh, a, a drink? Thank you. I warn you, Mr. Barney. Don't underestimate your own importance or your danger. Uh, uh, your drink, Rudolph. Thank you. The death of your secretary. The sudden illness of the ambassador in Washington. I feel it may all be a part of a dangerous plot. Good heavens. Oh, very well, if you're right, I'd better ask the government for an armed guard on my trip. Mr. Varney, I have another suggestion. What is it, Rudolph? If you know any way... Uh... My suggestion is that you and I exchange identities. That you travel as my secretary, Rudolph... And I as the envoy, Borny. 
you would take that chance? Yours is the life of value to our country. You must get those bonds through. Oh, very well. You feel that strongly about it, Rudolph? Very well. You shall be the special envoy. Vorne, I shall be your secretary, Rudolph, on our voyage to the United States. <laughs> Yes, the, the water churning from the propellers intrigues me. Turbulent, dangerous, like the world we live in. Oh, uh, have you had dinner? Mm. The mess they serve on this ship under the guise of food. But uh, I did have an interesting dinner partner. Hmm? Another gourmet like yourself? No. That American girl. The one we watched come aboard with the invalid in the wheelchair. Ah, yes. The pretty redhead. Mm-hmm. Her name's Myra Stevens, and the man in the wheelchair is her uncle. She's bringing him back to the United States for treatment. Well, you seem to have learned a great deal about her. Oh, well. <laughs> if I were 20 years younger, I'd be giving you competition myself. <laughs> well, shall we go to our cabin and finish packing? We dock early tomorrow. Oh, very well, very well. Uh, by the way, uh, we are to be officially met when the ship docks. Uh... Officially met? A radiogram came this morning from a Mr. David Harding of the American Counterspies. Counterspies? Yes, he's to meet us personally. His agency may take over the job of guarding me, and you won't have to worry anymore. Please, please, could you... Oh, Mr. Bourne. Miss Stevens, what's wrong? It's my uncle. He's fallen from his wheelchair, and I can't lift him back. Would you and your secretary be willing to help me? down here. He was trying to reach his medicine when he fell. Uh, here, this is our cabin. All right. Now, if... Uh, 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 Miss Stevens, your uncle is not on the floor. He's there on the bed. I thought... Uh, uh, Good work, Myra. The old fool never knew what hit him. That padded pipe was perfect. Not a mark on him. We can't afford any slips. Not with three million dollars at stake. How about your uncle on the bed? Is he still unconscious? Not a sound out of him since I brought him aboard. The stuff you gave him works like a charm. Who is he, anyway? Just a sailor I found on the docks. But he served his purpose. Here, give me a hand with old Borny. We'll put him in the wheelchair like this. What? Why don't we get rid of him? What are we saving him for? I have many uses in mind for old Borny. Now, my right, does a hypodermic needle bother you? Well, if you don't needle me with it. How long will that stuff keep the old man unconscious, Rudolph? Long enough for you to get him ashore tomorrow into your apartment. <clears throat> that should keep him quiet. Now get me a blanket. Sure. The one I wrapped around the other man. Wrap it around, Borny. Now, as far as anyone knows, this is the same man you brought aboard. Your poor, invalid uncle. While you go on posing as Borny. Pretty slick, Rudolph. I planned it, didn't I? One thing I don't get, though. Everyone in the United States will accept you as Vornay. Why did you have to forge a duplicate order for those bonds? My dear, Vornay was sent out to have $3 million worth of bonds printed. With that duplicate letter, I can have $6 million made. Six is more than three. So far, so good. At the right time, I send $3 million back to my country, as they expect. But for myself, I have $3 million more. Perfect bonds, genuine counterfeits, duplicates, that is, to be sold here and there around the world for my own profit. And mine. You'll get your share. Okay, mastermind. How do we get rid of this sailor? We'll wait till the deck is empty. And then send our sailor on his last sail. Without the boat. Up to the rail, Myra. Okay, but hurry up. Now you understand what you're to do. After we toss him over, I call man overboard. 
Then I tell the captain I saw my secretary, Rudolph, fall over the side of the ship. And I back you up so nobody can doubt your story. Okay, let's get it over with. All right. One, two, three. Uh, <clears throat> Hello, Uncle? by statistical department. Please report to Mr. Harding's office at once. Report to Mr. Harding. What's up, Mr. Harding? A job for you, Peters. Oh, I got my bulletproof vest. No, oh, no, this is an easy one. I just want you to meet a ship with me in New York and then arrange for the safety of the foreign envoy who's aboard. Another throneless king? A man named Vornay. He's been sent here to arrange the printing of some bonds for his country. Why here, Dave? To cut the chances of counterfeiting. His country's economy is already shaky, and they're issuing these bonds to add to the Marshall Plan aid we're already giving them. Any counterfeits might topple the government. So we play nurse, maiden? Well, it's vitally important for the United States to see that his government doesn't fall. These bonds may be the deciding factor. We'll fly up to New York now. The ship docks tomorrow morning. Coming, Peter. The person said Mr. Vornay went into this restaurant. What? Oh, sorry, Dave. But that red-headed girl. The one who left the ship with the man in the wheelchair? Mm-hmm. Now, if foreign envoys looked like that girl... Yeah, we'd have even more international complications. Come on, Romeo. <laughs> person said Mr. Vornay was wearing a white suit. Over there, Dave. Corner table. He looks rather young, doesn't he? Judging from what I've heard of Barney, get the diamond stick pin in his tie, eh? Uh, Mr. Barney? Ah, oh, you must be Mr. David Hart. Well, I'm sorry we missed you when you came down the gangplank. This is my assistant, Harry Peters. Barney, I'm very pleased to meet you both. Won't you join me? Thank you. You probably think it odd of me to eat as soon as I land. But you see, I consider myself a gourmet and the food on the boat. Well, I understand. I hope the voyage was good otherwise, though. On the contrary, Mr. Harding, it was tragic. Oh? My secretary, Rudolph, was lost at sea. Lost? He fell overboard, evidently an attack of dizziness. Poor Rudolph. Strange we hadn't heard of it, Mr. Harding. Well... Death on the high seas, ship of foreign registry, I suppose, Mr. Peters. They would not trouble your counter-spies with such a minor, though tragic, accident. Oh, is everyone sure it was an accident? It was seen both by myself and another passenger, so there was no question. It was definitely an accident. Was he a close friend, Mr. Boney? Very. I see. Well, my business in seeing you this morning, Mr. Borney, was to welcome you to our country and arrange whatever protection you desire while you're here. Protection? Uh, Mr. Harding, I have a great deal to do in your country. A great deal to see. Well, that's right. This is your first time outside your own country, isn't it? Yes. And I'd rather not have your agents tagging after me. I'm sure you understand. Well, that's up to you, of course. If there's anything at all we can do for you, please call on us. Shall we go, Peter? Why the frown, Dave? Peters, did you notice the way Vornay was eating? Well, he takes his food seriously. No, no, I mean the way he handled his silverware. He held the fork in his right hand eating, but when he wanted to cut, he changed the fork to his left. Well, don't we both do the same thing? Of course, we all do in this country. But in the one Vornay comes from, a country he's never supposed to have left before. They do it in the opposite way, keeping the fork in the left hand all the time. No, but Dave... Well, I'll admit it's a small thing, Peters. But there are others, too. Considering the importance of his mission, we can't take any chances. But what could be wrong? I don't know yet, but I will. Peters, we're going to have to be awfully careful because of his diplomatic standing. But we're going to do a bit of checking on Mr. Vornay. <laughs> Right, 
Massive. Find proof of foul play in Borne's secretary. Falling overboard at sea? Not yet. Thorndike is checking that angle now. But oh. I checked into recent news reports from Borne's country, and I found that the secretary before this one also died under peculiar circumstances. Oh? A short time before Borne sailed, he died in a mysterious gas explosion at his home. Oh. There's certainly something very fishy about Borne that isn't explained by his sea voyage. Wait, Dave. There's more. I found that only three pictures of Borne have ever been taken. The only copies of them in the main office of their big news service are mysteriously missing from their files. Peters, this is another proof that we ought to have a better, quicker means of getting photographs of people we're interested in. If we only had some sort of miniature camera that could be issued as standard equipment for every counter-spy... Well, it would certainly simplify our work, Dave. Well, question. A camera small enough to fit in the hand with a simplified foolproof mechanism. As simple as the old-style box cameras that a kid could operate. Well, why not send instructions through to Washington tonight? Photo Lab could begin work on it now. I'm going to do it. Well, if we had a camera like that on this case... Well, we haven't. We'll do the best we can. Now, first of all, Peters, keep on with this investigation of the high mortality rate in Borney's secretaries. Right. Also, I want a tail put on Borney. Our best man, Peters. This man's clever. Plant some men at his hotel, too. I'll see to it, Dave. And I want all our field officers alerted to try to locate somebody, a relative, a friend, who can identify Borney. Well, Dave, the captain of the ship identified him. At least he's the same man who came aboard. Well, we can't pass up any chances. And I also want to know whether Borney has ordered those bonds for his government. If so, I want delivery to him stalled until we complete our investigation. I'll handle that myself. Uh, no, uh, assign J-4 to it. I've got another job for you, Peters. A special job. In just a moment, we'll return to Counter Spy, brought to you by Pepsi-Cola. Pepsi-Cola hits the spot, two full glasses, that's a lot. Lots more value, lots more zest, why take less when Pepsi's best? More and more, among fellows and girls, among mothers and dads, you hear that sane and sensible question. Why take less when Pepsi is best? No budget, no allowance ever had a better friend than tangy, sparkling Pepsi-Cola. Because one big 12-ounce Pepsi bottle gives you two delicious drinks. That's twice as much tangy taste, twice as much delicious Pepsi to go just twice as far. That's why more and more families say, why take less when Pepsi is best? Yes, families like yours and mine, families all over America, they're all saying, why take less when Pepsi is best? Pepsi-Cola hits the spot, tastes terrific when you're hot, more and better than the rest. Why take less when Pepsi is best? Today, tomorrow, always. Get America's biggest cola value. Take home a carton of six big, big Pepsi bottles. Insist on Pepsi at the store. And say Pepsi at the fountain. Say Pepsi at the stand. Say Pepsi. Whenever you reach for refreshment, remember... Why take less when Pepsi's best? And now, back to Counter Spy. A man stands outside the door of a New York apartment hotel, looks around, then pushes the doorbell. Rudolph, come in. What's wrong when you phone First, me? First, has anything odd happened here, Myra? Odd? Any repairmen trying to get in? People with the wrong apartment number? Noise on the telephone? No, no, nothing. Uh. Think somebody's on to us? Think Harding and his counter spies are suspicious. I told you about my lunch. Harding didn't say anything. He watched me very closely. And now I've been followed every time I leave my hotel. Followed? And you came here? Don't worry. I shook them off. But we must move fast. You mean run away? Give up three million dollars in a year's work? No. I've already ordered the bonds and just need a little more time. You don't suppose they dope out you're not born, eh? Myra, darling. Suppose I prove that I am. Is Vaughn still safe in the next room? Sure. Let's go see. All right. Started to wake up about an hour ago. I had to give him another hypo. All right, but from now on, only half a shot. Yeah, look how peaceful he is. If we cut down on the dose, he might wake up and make a lot of noise. Then keep him tied and gagged. But I need him conscious enough to sign some papers. Now, where's that gold cigarette case of his? Uh, he, here in the drawer. I was keeping it. You mean you were going to steal it? 
I give you a chance at part of three million dollars and you waste time on small change. Myra, you're still just a nightclub girl at heart. Hey, now. Hold his arm while I get his fingerprints all over the cigarette case. What good will that do? Your prints will be on it, too. Oh, no. I've coated my own fingers with collodion. I can't leave any prints. Then what? I read in the papers that David Harding is again in New York. I'm going to drop in and see him and just happen to leave my case. Warner's will be the only prints they'll find on it. It's pretty slick, Rudolph, even for you. <laughs> Isn't it? I just hope it's uh, slick enough to fool the compass spies. J4 calling Mr. Harding. A checkup of bond engraving companies reveals that two separate orders have been placed by Vornay. Each order is for $3 million worth of negotiable bonds. Examination of the orders proves one letter to be a clever duplicate of the other. Twice the original amount ordered, huh? And that's the answer to his racket. Three million to be sold by his government and an equal amount for his own profit. The bond companies have agreed to stall him as you requested. Okay. Stand by for further orders. All right, Miss Ferguson, you can send Mr. Vornay in now. Come in, Mr. Vornay. Thank you. I hope I'm not keeping you from your so important work. Not at all. What can I do for you? I stopped in to thank you and your Mr. Peters for your kindness in meeting me when my ship docked the other day. Well, I'm sorry Mr. Peters isn't in right now. He's out on a job. Shame. I hope to see him. Uh, mind if I smoke, Mr. Harding? Not at all. You'll find some cigarettes oh, there. Oh, Trapper, please. I have this case with my own favorite brand. Would you excuse me? Sure. Harding speaking. All done, Dave. We got into Borney's room as soon as he left and went over it with the infrared equipment so there won't be any traces left. Mm hmm. Get anything? All the fingerprints you want. I'm bringing the photographs right down to be developed. One bad break, though. Borney again shook off the man we had trailing him. No idea where he is now. I have. Here. Would you? <laughs> Boy, if he could hear this call. I don't think that'd be too good. I'll see you later. Sorry, Mr. Borney. It is my fault for taking up your time when you are busy chasing some, uh, how you say, international racketeers. No, no, I'm glad you came. I have some news for you. We've located an old friend of yours here in the United what? States. A friend? Otto Strebling in Chicago. He used to work with you in your country. Remember him? But, oh, of course. But you shouldn't have bothered. Oh, it's no bother at all, Mr. Vornay. Anything to make your visit here a memorable one. I've arranged for Strebling to fly in from Chicago tonight. He'll land at 7. Could someone please tell me where I can get a cab? Could any? For goodness sake, well, no one... Strebling. Mr. Otto Strebling. Yes, I am Otto Strebling. Darling, how good to see you. But, Play but along I... with me. My name is Myra Stevens. I'm a counter-spy. A counter-spy? For goodness no sake, No time to explain. I... You value your life to as I say. Darling, just you come along with me. My car is right outside. All right, but why do we have to be so careful? There is no one around. I told you, you and Vornay are both in danger. You, uh, you are taking me to my old friend, Mr. Vornay, aren't you? Yes, he's being hidden here until we catch the foreign agents who are after him. All right, get inside. All right, you don't have to poke at me with it. For oh, goodness sake, why do you point that gun at me? Why do people usually point guns, stupid? Now go on into the next room. But, but, but you, you said you would take me to my friend. That's just what I'm doing. He's right in here. Here you are, Otto, old boy. Mr. Vornay. Why, what? For oh, goodness sake, he's all tied up in his face. We tried to convince him he should sign some papers. Maybe now when he sees you, he'll behave. You? 
You are not Lizzie Carter's spy. Stay where you are. I may wear a skirt, Bob, but I can shoot pretty good at close range. You, you, you lied to me. Not entirely. In a way, I am with the counter spy. At least my boss, Rudolph, is. Yeah, at this very minute, he's having dinner with David Harding, head of the counter spy. Setting up a perfect alibi for himself. <laughs> Mr. Harding, when I invited you to dinner... Well, we'll have our dinner, Mr. Borne, but first I thought you'd like to see how we make an arrest in this country. Of course, but... A uh, call I received just before we left was from my agents. They followed the girl accomplice of a certain criminal to a house here in the suburbs. This house, as a matter of fact. Yes? Come along, Mr. Borne. I'm sure you'll be interested. After you, Mr. Harding. Oh, no, Miss Ford. After you. Come on, Miss Wake up. Pluto. Mr. Harding, I... Harding? What kind of a frame is this? I pick up Otto here like you said. Silent, you fool. That is not Otto. That's Harry Peters, one of Harding's men. A counter Now take that gun. No, you don't. All right, Peters, you can untie Mr. Borney now. And as for you, Mr. Rudolph, you're under arrest. On what charge, Mr. Harding? The kidnapping of Mr. Borney, forging official documents, and... But, Mr. Harding, I'm not responsible for what this woman did. Why, you double-crossing jerk. You're not passing the buck to me on this. Listen, Harding, this guy's already killed two men, and before I'm done talking... All right, you'll get your chance to talk. We already have all the proof we need. You see, Rudolph, your clever trick with the cigarette case didn't work. We'd already gotten your fingerprints from your apartment. You simply gave away the fact that the real envoy was here, too. Ha! And you thought you were so slick, Mastermind. He was, but not clever enough. He fell for the story that an old friend of Vorney's was coming and led my men here just as we expected. All right, Mr. Harding. Let's get it over with. Let's go. Certainly, Rudolph. Oh, I did promise you a dinner, didn't I? Well, you'll get it. It'll be interesting to get the opinion of a gourmet like yourself, Rudolph, on the food served in our federal prisons. When your friends drop in, be generous, but be thrifty, too. There are plenty of delicious Pepsi-Cola. Pepsi's big 12-ounce bottle gives you not just one sparkling glass full, but two. Get a carton of six and serve 12 delicious drinks. Yes, Pepsi is America's biggest cola value. You get twice the tangy taste, twice the refreshment, twice the Pepsi. So why take less when Pepsi is best? Whenever you reach for refreshment, remember... Pepsi-Cola, it's a spot. Two full glasses, that's a lot. Lots more value, lots more zest. Why take less when Pepsi's best? Tune in every Tuesday and Thursday, same time, same station, to Counter Spy. Listen next Tuesday for the exciting Counter Spy case of the Society Swindler. Time, said the master criminal, had to be treated just right. And time meant two things, money and death. Yet in the end, it was time that trapped him, for time is not the exclusive weapon of crime, but used, too, by your counter-spies to catch the man I call the Society Swindler. Case of the Society Swindler on Counter-Spy. Tonight's Counter-Spy program originated in New York, was directed by William M. Sweets, and featured Don McLaughlin and Mandel Kramer with music by Jesse Crawford. Counter Spy is a Phillips H. Lord production for Pepsi-Cola. Enjoy some Pepsi, ice cold tonight. (laughs) 